Hi guys, um, it's Michelle again. I have already made this video about twice now and everything keeps kind of coming out funny. My last video that I thought was really good cut off half my head, so I'm going to attempt to make this video one more time and hopefully things go smoothly this time. So in this video I'm going to be talking to you guys about um, finding a home over here in Germany. Uh, we are here for a three year tour, so we were looking to rent, definitely not buy. Um, and there was a lot of factors that kind of went into it. And I just kind of want to give you guys kind of how that whole process works. We kind of already went into it believing that we were more than likely going to be living off base. Um, but once we got here, honestly, living on base was still a little bit of a possibility. So, you know, we kind of went back and forth for a little bit, but ultimately, um, we ended up living off base. I'm just going to kind of talk about the process and kind of some of the things, the reasons why we chose to live off base, just to kind of throw it out there. So if that's, if you guys are PCSing here soon, you kind of have a little bit of an idea of what you want to do. First of all, you some bases here in Germany don't allow you to live off base. I didn't realize that. Um, luckily for us, uh, Ramstein wasn't one of them, but that's something that you kind of want to keep in mind and look into before you come out here. Um, my husband's currently stationed at Ramstein, so it's kind of Ramstein, Bobaway, and Lahnstuhl are all, there's housing on each one of those bases. So if you choose to get a house on base, you could end up at any one of those three bases. Being stationed at Ramstein doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get a house on Ramstein. You might get a house on Bulgoy, you might get a house on Launchstool. But the bases are all within fairly close distance of one another. We, for instance, are about 18 minutes away from base, and we're actually closer to Launchstool than we are. Um, we're about 18 minutes away from Ramstein. We're actually closer to Launchstool. Um, that's where my son goes to school. So, um, they're not far from each other. So regardless of where you live and where you work, you won't have that bad of a commute. Um, so some things to kind of think about when you first get here, we flew on the rotators. So we landed right into Ramstein Air Base. We had quarantine, unfortunately with COVID and everything going on. So we were pretty much went our sponsor picked us up. We went and checked into our um, inn, and that's where we stayed. Uh, you have the option to test out after five days, and your travel day is considered day zero, so it's technically like six days. Um, so that's what we did, and we ended up getting out early. We got our test results really fast, which was nice, and so we were able to kind of start exploring um, after about the first week, but... Um, that's something to kind of keep in mind. When we booked TLF, we had TLF for about a month. Um, really nice TLF. Uh, probably one of the nicest TLFs I've ever stayed in. It's similar to what you can expect from stairwell housing here. It's got, it had three bedrooms, plenty of space. Um, had a washer and dryer in the TLF, which was nice. Uh, so, I mean, I felt pretty roomy there, a nice good sized kitchen, like it, it felt a nice little balcony. Of course it was cold so we didn't go on the balcony very much, but um, yeah, it was, it was nice. Um, one of the things when you're getting ready to find a house here, if you choose to live off base, is the process a little, a little bit different than it is in America. In America you kind of just call up a realtor and they usually line up about a bunch of houses for you to just go look at and decide which one you want to rent out. Here in Germany, it works a little bit differently. You kind of make your own appointments. Uh, most of the realtors work for the people that they're selling or that they're renting the house out from. Uh, so there isn't a whole lot of realtors that, like, you don't just really, like, call a realtor and, like, set up an appointment. It's kind of like you set up your own appointments to go view the houses. Um, there is a lot of different websites that you can use to help you find a house if you do choose to live off base. 
Homestop Mill is one of the best because those houses are typically they're on they're they can't be on that website unless they've been housing approved already. Um, and they have to have as long as they've had an inspection, I believe in the past five years, then it just makes the process a whole lot easier because you don't have to worry about the housing getting approved or having to wait for that end of it because most those houses are already approved. So Homestop Mill is a really good site. HRN is another really good one, HRN.com. That's where we went and we found this house through there and actually a combination there and Facebook. It was on both. Um, I actually messaged the lady twice about this house. Um, but AHRN was a really good website and a lot of those houses are housing approved as well. The um, Facebook was another good place. I found a ton of places on Facebook. A lot of military spouses um, will go on there and either post their house because they're getting ready to PCS or they might post houses for their landlord because a lot of landlords out here own more than one property. Um, so that's a really good site to check out as well. Um, and the, uh, there's some realtors on there too that might post things as well. Book Buku.com. A lot of people use Buku.com. I went on there a couple times, but I wasn't as lucky as some other people tend to be. Like I've I've heard a lot of people use Buku.com and found their house, but the one house that we found on Buku.com, we went to go check it out before we actually went to go see it. Like, got a tour of it and the location already. We were just, mm -mm, it was parked like on the top of this like super steep hill, and it was going to be something that I had to like back out of every day. And there was like hardly any parking, and we're like, oh, it's not quite what we want. And it looks nice on the out inside, but the outside is just definitely not what we're looking for. So, um, but anyways, uh, houses here also go pretty quickly, especially during PCS season. So you have to kind of be mindful of that. Um, the first house we actually went to go look at, we fell in love with you guys. It was really nice. Um, lots of space, lots of bedrooms, um, updated, a huge yard, but the couple that came in like as we were leaving another couple came in to come view the house and they were interested in it as well and the landlord ultimately went with them um so that was kind of disappointing because then the next house we looked at was a little too small for us and we were just like is this what it's gonna be like because i'm already feeling a little like the air just went out of my sails but then we found this house on the third our third house that we looked at was this house and we just, we jumped on it because we were like, we, we like this house. We're not going to wait. We're not going to hesitate. So that's something to keep in mind, especially if you're coming here during PCS season, these houses go fast. So just keep that in mind. Um, some of the, I'll talk about kind of the pros and cons to living on base and off base. Um, First of all, on base is very convenient. So if you're looking for something, you know, maybe you're nervous about living in another country and you just kind of want to take the guesswork out of it and you just, you want to enjoy it and travel, but you just don't want to be, you know, worrying about your day to day and, and you're kind of nervous about it. Um, on base could be a really great option. Um, they have two different style homes. They have these townhomes, which are really nice, um, that have like a little garage and its own little yard. And then they have the stairwell housing, which is kind of like apartment style living. Like I said, they're pretty spacious, um, but you do kind of share like a stairwell and there's no real like yard for those areas. <laughs> um, I saw some where they had kind of set up like a little barbecue area and like everybody kind of joined their barbecue or their uh, grills and stuff and they kind of had like made a little outdoor area together um, but there's not really like a, a fenced off yard for the stairwell um, so you have to kind of keep that in mind on base housing here in Germany they don't tend to have closets uh, they get taxed per room when they build a house so they generally don't build in closets because the closet's considered another room. 
So they usually just make the rooms a little bit bigger and just not have a closet or they might kind of have a, like a little open area that's considered storage space. On base has a lot of uh, the built-in wardrobes. Um, so, you know, if you're kind of concerned about that, they actually have the built-in wardrobes uh, that like build into the walls and those have plenty of space. We had those in TLF and they were, there was a lot of storage. So that was kind of nice. Um, other thing about on base is that they have the dual voltage, so they'll have the 110 and the 220, so you don't really have to worry about changing out any of your appliances. For us, like kitchen appliances was like a huge one because <laughs> most kitchen appliances are not 220 compatible. So if you are nervous about that and you know, you're not really willing to go out and get new appliances or use a lot of transformers, then um, on base housing has both. So you, either way, you're good to go. Um, for off, so, so when you, and just like with any base housing, you're qualified based on the number of members of your family. So we're a family of four. We have two kids. We qualified for a three bedroom. Um, so we were on the wait list for a three bedroom, which is good and plenty of space, I'm sure. But we kind of have a partial to, we like to have that little extra bedroom. We use it as an office. Um, so we were kind of really kind of hoping for a four. Uh, so that was kind of one of our appeals for wanting to go off base because we could kind of maybe find a home with a little bit more room for us. Um, and that's really like not something that we had to have, but it was something that we kind of preferred. Um, another reason why we chose to live off base too was we really wanted to kind of be immersed in the German culture. We wanted kind of that experience. Every village has their own sort of celebrations that they do around the holidays when it's not COVID. Uh, but like right across the street from us there's a park and they do their own like festivals every village has their own festival and they all like gather right there in that park um so it's just like a big drinking celebration pretty much because it's germany um they also have their own bakery we have a bakery like um right down the street our village is pretty on the small side so we actually don't have a grocery store but about five minutes away there's another village that has a grocery store <laughs> Um, most villages have their own butchers too. Um, we have like our own little hair salon and there's a couple restaurants in town when COVID's not going on, but, um, and most of the villages are really close together. So it's crazy. Like we live in, in one village and then there's another village that's probably about five minutes away. And then there's another village that's about 10 minutes that way. And then there's another village, like they're all really close together. So they all have their own kind of sense of community, but at the same time, like, you know, you can, it doesn't take very long. Like if you want to go to a pizza place over in this village, like it's really not that far away. So it's kind of cool. Um, so that's kind of, uh, you know, uh, one thing to kind of keep in mind when you're deciding whether you want to live on base or off base. Um, if you decide to live off base, FMO does provide some, um, things that you, uh, appliances and things that you can have for the duration of your stay here. Um, American size refrigerator, because the German refrigerators are pretty small. If you live off base, most Germans only grocery shop for one day. It's not like in America where we kind of grocery shop for an entire week or month. They only usually get the groceries that they need per day. So their refrigerators are not very big and their freezers are even smaller guys. <laughs> really small. Um, so you will get an American size refrigerator, also a washer and dryer, um, as well as wardrobes. So you get two wardrobes for the service member, plus an additional wardrobe per member of your family. So as a family of four, we actually got five wardrobes, which was plenty for us. Um, mainly because we actually had a little, not really, but sort of closet area here in this house. Um, so we ended up with plenty of space and we have plenty of storage for all the clothes and everything. And I have a lot of clothes, guys. The closet thing really kind of made me worry, but we're good. <laughs> um, 
They will also provide you with temporary furniture. So say that you find a house to live in or you're living on base and you don't have your furniture here yet. They will provide you with things like a bed and um, what do you call it? like a couch, <laughs> what do you call that? A couch or bed, just some basic furniture that you can borrow until your furniture actually gets here. We got lucky and our furniture actually came before we did because of our weird PCS. My husband had to go to OTS for a couple months, so we kind of just were like on a vacation visiting family for a couple months before we actually came to Germany. But they had to pack our stuff up because we were out processing from that base. So back in December, so our furniture was actually here by the end of January and we were still weren't going to be in country until March. So it was kind of a weird circumstances. So we kind of got lucky and our stuff was already here. Um, so once we kind of moved in and got our place, we got our furniture within a couple of days. So it was great. Um, actually, a little bit faster than that is a little nuts. We'll talk about that different time. But one thing um, to keep in mind, too, if you're kind of deciding if you want to live on base or off base. Oh, another thing about on base, too, is that the convenience factor, I kind of talked a little bit about that, but it really, the housing, at least in Ramstein, we didn't really see much of the other bases, but in Ramstein, the BX, the commissary, there's an elementary school, there's a CDC, I think the middle school's in that area too. They're all like right there. So it is really extremely convenient if you're, you know, a little nervous about I don't know where I'm gonna go or or where everything is like everything is located right there so that is one good thing about living on base is that it's really convenient that like everything you could need is like right there in that one little area and the kids like as soon as they get out of school we notice they just all like race to the playground there's like I swear there was a playground every time I turned around there was a ton of playgrounds in that housing area so definitely plenty of like outdoor activity for the kids to go play and you don't really have to worry about them it's just kind of like one of those wholesome good neighborhoods so they're kind of plus for living on base um, but one thing about to consider too is say you're interested in living off base but you're still not quite sure if that's exactly what you want to do you can start out living off base and then if you decide you know this really isn't for me and I think for convenience or whatever I think I would rather live on base you can get put on the waiting list for moving on base and if they find you a home they will move you from off base to on base so they'll pay for the move for you to move on off base to on base um, if that's what you want uh, if that's what you decide later on however if you start out on base and want to go off base that comes out of pocket so they won't pay for that but it's a really you know uh kind of an option for you out there especially if housing you're on the waiting list and housing's like yeah we're not going to have a house for another six months um you might want to think about okay well let me try living off base but you can keep on the waiting list so that when a house does open up you can switch back um so if um, you decide to live off base, which is what we did. The way that process works is that you have a housing agreement that comes from the housing office. You take that housing agreement to your landlord and you and your landlord negotiate everything um, that needs to be talked about. So all the utilities, who's responsible for the utilities um, and how those get paid, how much the rent is, um, you know, if there is any extra fees, for example, there's a garage and like we have a really big garage and a lot of um, homes here in Germany, they charge uh, like a separate rent for the garage. So our house is a certain amount, but then we pay an additional amount of money for the garage too, for using the garage. So um, that's kind of like that'll be in the contract too. And then on top of that, we had to pay another fee because they they have a chimney 
uh, sweep service that they have to do. Um, and that's just where somebody comes to your house and they check because a lot of these houses have chimneys but that are closed up. Like our chimney is closed up. It's not a wood burning system anymore, but they go in and they look and they check all the duct work and stuff just to make sure that, you know, the house doesn't get set on fire. And they clean it out and make sure that everything stays like clean. There's not like an animal or something in there, I guess. Um, and then like another thing in our contract was that we're responsible for our sidewalk. Um, like when it snows or if it gets icy, we have to make sure that we clear off the sidewalk around our house um, so that nobody gets hurt. Um, so that's the things that you talk about with your landlord. Once you get those all kind of settled out, you'll also pick like your move in date and when you want to move in. Then the landlord signs that document and you take that document to the housing office. Um, we just uploaded ours because of COVID, like they're limiting like in-person stuff, but we just uploaded ours and sent it to them. We sent ours in on a Tuesday and it was the house that we chose was already housing approved. We sent it in on a Tuesday and we got approved by Wednesday, late Wednesday. Um, so it was really fast, really quick process. But like I said, ours was already housing approved. So it was literally just, yeah, we want to live in this house. Okay. <laughs> and so they, they, they'll review your contract and if everything looks good, they'll call you to set up an appointment so that you can go in and sign the paperwork in front of them. So you don't sign it when the landlord does, you sign it after housing is approved it. You don't want to sign it until housing is approved it. Once they've approved it, then you sign in front of housing to show that you're good to go and that you understand everything um, that's expected of you. Um, and then at that point, it's just time to set up FMO delivery and TMO delivery um, so that you can move into your home. Um, I will be posting a video hopefully soon I'm waiting on the GoPro to charge right now, actually. Um, and I'll show you guys a tour of the house. I'm probably going to do it in a couple of different parts because the inside, like, living portion of the house versus the garage are, like, two different worlds. You guys will see what I'm talking about. It's They're very different. Um, but each is, is really kind of cool. So I want to kind of show you guys both of those, but on separate videos, because I think it'll be a little easier as far as like walking through the house. It'll be easier to kind of do two, two separate videos. Um, and then I'd like to post another video where I kind of show you some of the things about German homes that are a little bit different um, than American homes, just so you guys can kind of see um, some of the cool features that they have here in German homes and some of the things that you might need to kind of prepare for. Um, but if you guys have any questions, comments, anything you'd like to add to this, please post in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, I hope the video quality wasn't too bad. I'm sorry for being a noob at this, but hopefully we'll, we'll move right along. So... I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.